क्लाउड इज डिसाइंड स्पेसिफिकली फॉर वन पर्सन और वन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और वन इंस्टीट्यूट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज प्राइवेट क्लाउड वॉट यू मैन बाई क्यू एस using public cloud we can maintain the quality of service provided by the service providers hello everyone welcome to the session on cloud computing myself indu j faculty of computer science department vidyashram first grade college temple of excellence mysore in last session we have discussed a uh, service models about the cloud what all the service models provided by the cloud in this session we are going to discuss what all the deployment model we have on the cloud or generally you can say in uh, regular terms you can say it is a type of clouds how many types of clouds we have so that's we are going to deal in today's session let's start the session cloud deployment model cloud constitutes the primary outcome of the cloud computing okay it is then possible to differentiate four different types of cloud deployment model is what nothing but the different types of cloud how many different categories we have in the cloud so what uh, how many categories we have we have a uh, four categories in the cloud public cloud the cloud is open to the wider public that is called as public cloud anyone and everyone can use it that is a public cloud then first category a second category is a private cloud cloud is designed specifically for one person or one organization or one institute that is called as private cloud the cloud is implemented within the private premises of an institution and generally made accessible to the member of institutions that cloud is called as private cloud next what we have is this is a third category that is hybrid or heterogeneous cloud hybrid means what combining different things similarly here also we are combining both the public cloud as well as the private cloud the combining the characteristics of both public and the private cloud we are developing one more type of cloud that is called as hybrid cloud the cloud is a combination of two previous solutions and most likely identifies the private cloud that has been argumented with the resource or the service hosted by the public cloud it includes what the characteristics of both private as well as a public cloud this is one more category that is a community cloud what you mean by community cloud this can be an a private cloud this can be an a public cloud or this can be an a hybrid cloud but it has to work for specific purpose that is called as community cloud you are forming one uh, community of the specific interest or specific task that is called as Uh, community cloud the cloud is characterized by the multi administrative domain involving a different deployment method it can be public private or the hybrid and it is specifically designed to address the needs of specific industry here you can take an example medical industry so one particular one cloud will be generated for the medical industry there the different hospitals will share their data they transfer the data one patient record so for example if you go to one doctor got uh, doctor uh, ask you to do all the test and he refer some other doctor to right when he is referring some other doctor all the reports what you have done that has to be shared to the other doctor also so here they are sharing directly to the from one doctor to the other doctor you need not to carry the hard copy of your reports okay they such uh, for specific purpose they are using what is the purpose there or specific task for the medical reason so that is called as community cloud community cloud is developed only for the specific need or specific purpose let's see each type of cloud in detail public cloud public cloud constitute the first expression of cloud computing whenever we say it's cloud computing public cloud come into picture because why because it is 
publicly available generally available to anyone and everyone okay that is a concept of cloud computing everything will be shared among the people they are the realization of the canonical view of cloud computing in which the service offered are made available to anyone from anywhere and any point through the internet public clouds are very first class of cloud that were implemented and offered that's what i told you whenever we say it's a cloud computing public cloud will come into picture they offers a solution for minimizing a it infrastructure what public cloud does it offers the infrastructure or cost minimization for infrastructure cost and the services are made available option viable options for handling the peak load on the local infrastructure okay and then interesting option for the small entrepreneurs which are able to start their business without a large upfront investment okay whenever we have to do any startups we have to have our own infrastructure if you want to start one it company you should hire some developers some some testers something like that for everyone you should provide server local connection lan connection network connection for network again you have to install the routers modems switches everything so as a startup we don't have that much of budget to invest at that time it is a viable solution which is a viable solution public cloud is a viable solution because everything is available on the internet just you have to use those resources and you have to pay only for those resources and only for that time what time you are using it for and then a fundamental characteristics of public cloud is multi tenantry what do you mean by multi tenantry all of you heard about tenants right in one house is renting for only one person or the one family that is called as one to one renting but here what they are doing in the cloud they are doing the uh, renting the resources multiple to many users at the same time so it is called multi tenantry a public cloud is meant to serve a multitude a multitude means multiple users of users not a single customers hope you understood that what is multi tenantry renting the resources for multiple user at the same time next what we have uh, in the public cloud is qos what do you mean by qos using public cloud we can maintain the quality of service provided by the service providers qos management is very important aspect of the public cloud because many users are accessing the resources so many people need to fetch some data so quality of service whatever the service they are providing that is also very important simply you cannot give a randomly the resources and resources is not accessible by the user that should not happen so the maintaining the quality of service is very important aspects in the public cloud because many users are using it a significant portion of the software infrastructure is devoted to monitoring the cloud resources and keep the complete history of the cloud usage for each customer okay to manage this what they are doing they are devoting one complete service software infrastructure to maintain the resources only and to maintain the account how much resources has been shared to how much customers so that will be one complete separate is software they'll be having a public cloud can offer any kind of services infrastructure platform and then the application what all public cloud can have it can have all any kind of services that we have already discussed what is services that is infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service so it can provide any type of services infrastructure platform and then the application next what we have are some examples of public cloud what all the public cloud we can we are seeing now amazon ec2 
okay amazon ec2 is one of the majorly used public cloud nowadays is a public cloud that provides the infrastructure as a service it provides what infrastructure as a service google app engine is a public cloud that provides a platform as a service what we are providing here as a service platform as a service salesforce.com is a public cloud that provides a software as a service that is saas software as a service okay these are some of the example for each service type public cloud can be geographically dispersed data center it should not uh, it's not necessary that all the data centers of the public cloud should be present at the one place it is dispersed geographically dispersed for example amazon web services has a data center installed in united state europe singapore and then the australia in four different countries it will be having its data center geographically different areas next we have is private cloud what you meant by private cloud what is the disadvantage we have in the public cloud why we have to move from public cloud to private cloud is that disadvantage is mainly the security why because the cloud is having all the data that is a public cloud anyone can access at any time they can use uh, use that data for the good thing or the bad thing is not in the control of the cloud service provider right so to maintain some data privacy they are using the private cloud where we can use the private cloud for example government agencies government don't want to reveal some of the data to the public at the there they can use the private especially in the militaries border securities they are all they are using the private cloud where data is very crucial and very information is is very sensitive at that time we can use a private cloud public cloud are viable option to cut the it cost and reduce the capital expenses but they are not applicable in all the scenarios just now i have told you what all the scenarios they are not applicable so institutions such as a government and then the military agency will not consider the public cloud as an option for proceeding or storing some sensitive datas according to the specific location of data some sensitive information can be made accessible to the government agency or even considered outside the law of law if proceeded with the scientific cryptography techniques so to achieve this we are using the private cloud for example what uh, the sensitive data is example us pirate act 5 in the law globally in the court they have given the declaration that the data is very sensitive that, that should not be shared to the many peoples so limited power to access the information so in the court they have declared that they ha they should have a limited power to access such sensitive data so why because all the data cannot be shared for all the public so private clouds are virtually distributed system that rely on the private infrastructure it is what distributed system but it rely on particular infrastructure only one separate cloud is given for one institute or one organization private cloud have the advantage of keeping the core business portion in house what they are doing they are keeping the core business in the house by relying on the existing it infrastructure okay and reducing the burden of maintaining it once and the cloud has been set set up what they are doing have some infrastructure for this particular infrastructure whatever infrastructure is they are creating one private cloud what is this private cloud this is a virtual cloud this is virtually that that does not exist physically but using this infrastructure with some more resources they are creating this private cloud for particular organization
okay that's what a private cloud is doing in private cloud there is a possibility of testing competency low price rather than the public cloud why because we are using the resources whether we are not sharing the resources we are using the resources for particular organization the cost will be more so you, in one infrastructure you have to set up complete infrastructure for that institution itself okay within the institution we can share the resources but we cannot share the resources out of the institution or the organization so the cost is little high compared to the public cloud the key advantage of using the private cloud computing infrastructure is the customer information is protected what is a key advantage data protection information protection few provides a satisfactory disclosure and few provides the warranties about the specific level of the security protection and then the security what are the key advantage we have here is a data protection and then the data security then private cloud cloud complies with the standard procedure and operation if the organization are subject to the third party complaint standard the specific procedures have to be put in the place when the deploying the executing application so third party cannot interfere or third party cannot complain on the private cloud private clouds can be implemented on more heterogeneous hardware what do you mean by heterogeneous hardware combining different type of resources that is called as heterogeneous hardware they generally rely on the existing infrastructure already deployed on the private premises just now i have explained you with the diagram with the existing infrastructure only with the creating the private cloud this could be an a data centers a clusters an entrepreneur desktop grid or a combination of them what is a heterogeneous hardware here it can be an a data center it can be an a cluster or enterprises desktop grid or it can be an a combination of all the three That, that's why it is called as heterogeneous hardware next what we have is hybrid cloud what do you mean by hybrid cloud here we are combining the advantage of public cloud as well as the advantage of the private cloud what is advantage in the public cloud we can share the cost is very less and what is the advantage in the private cloud the security and then the protection data security and the protection combining those two we are providing the hybrid cloud what they are doing in the hybrid cloud some of the data which is not very sensitive that will be taken with the public cloud and some of the data which is very sensitive that will be taken care by the private cloud public cloud suffers from the security threat and administrative pitfall the private cloud inability to scale on demand to the efficiently address peaks the load so to overcome from these two drawbacks they have created what hybrid solution taking the advantage of best of private and the public clouds next what we have is dynamic provisioning in hybrid cloud we have a dynamic provision we can scale which is not there in the private cloud so we are providing dynamic provision is a fundamental concept of this scenario what do you mean by dynamic provision you can change the data dynamically means it is not the static thing it is not the constant it is viable to the constraints these resources or the services are temporarily leased for the requirement and then released this practice is also known as cloud busting for example if i have one keyboard and two memory that is sd card so this is a consider this is a resources okay here what we are doing i i have a two users right user 2 and 
user 1. User 1 also want to access the keyboard. User 2 also want to access the keyboard. Similarly, user 1 also wants to access the SD card to store something or user 2 also want SD card that is memory card to store something. What happens in the hybrid cloud? We can allot this key for the user 1 and this for both the user. What it is saying here in this means required or lease the resource whenever you want and release whenever you are done with. At the time T1 keyboard will be used by the user 1 and at the time T3 keyboard is not required by the user 1. So what it will do it will release. It will release the keyboard. Once it is released the keyboard the keyboard will be given to the user to. That is what we are leasing the resources for particular time. That's, that's the explanation of the second point. Hybrid cloud allows the entrepreneurs to exploit existing IT infrastructure, maintain sensitive information within the premises, maintain sensitive uh, information within the premises and naturally grow and sink by providing the external resources by releasing them when they are lo no longer needed. When they are no longer needed, we are releasing those resources and make available to other users to use it. It is a heterogeneous distributed system. I have already explained you what is heterogeneous system uh, resulting from a private cloud that integrates the additional services or the resources from one or more public cloud. That is integrating what services from the private cloud as well as from the public cloud. So they are called as heterogeneous cloud or the hybrid cloud. Next other type of that is a fourth type of cloud is community cloud. Community clouds are distributed systems created by integrating the service of different clouds to address the specific need. Integrating the service of all the three nodes to have some specific needs. The National Institute Standards and the Technology NIST characterizes the community cloud as follows. That according to NIST, they have given the definition for the community cloud. Let's see what is the definition for the community cloud. The infrastructure is shared by the several organization and supports the specific community. That is, supports the specific community that has shared some concern. It may be managed by the organization or a third party. Who is the third party here? That is cloud service provider. Who is the third party? Cloud service provider. And may exist on the premises or off the premises. What does definition says? It is in a particular infrastructure shared by the several organization to support one purpose, specific community. For example, I have given you the medical community. Here community that has shared the concern. All the medical community are sharing their concern to each other. By managing the organization, it can manage its community cloud, the organ, any of one of the organization out of so many can manage cloud or it can be managed by the third party who is a third party who is creating the community cloud that is cloud service provider and may exist on premises or off premises. It can be on any one of the organization, the resources can be at any one of the organization or it may be off premises, it not exist only we are using the virtual machines or virtual resources. Next what we have is community cloud, community cloud works like this is here we have a private user, we have a public services whatever they are using by using the public cloud. Public services are deployed onto the public cloud that is a deployment platform and who is managing all this, managing all this by third party cloud. Here public cloud will be used for application services, private cloud also can deploy something on the platforms by industries whatever they are taking some sensitive data are uh, deployed also on the 
cloud here the private cloud also can use application as a services but here it has to fall under some constraint all the legal constraints okay this is all about a community cloud community cloud the candidate uh, sector of community clouds are as follows where all we are using the community cloud one is media industry all tv channels together sharing their community cloud healthcare industries just i have explained you how healthcare industry is using the community cloud emergency and other core industries emergency whenever there will be flood fire heavy rain all uh, those time we can use this community cloud a public sector also they can use the community cloud all the government organization together putting serving for only the uh, good of the civil civilizers right so that is called as uh, public sector and scientific research scientific research need much communication between each other so whatever the research has been each research topic has to be updated each and every time what all going on currently in the trends everything will be shared using the community cloud community the cloud benefits what all the benefits of this community clouds are there as following openness it is open for particular community and whoever belongs to that community can access the data and community you are specifically creating one community information all the information of that community will be present here and graceful failure what do you mean by graceful failure if you, if it fails one system fails or one organization data will be failed it can be accessed by some other organization because a different organization together are forming the community cloud the convenience and control they can control the cloud on their own or it can be done by third party then environmental sustainability why we say that environment sustainability because you are not using every organization is not using their own server they are relying on some other server they are sharing the resources so we are uh, saving much energy so that's a environmental sustainability concept all these are the benefits of cloud computing next topic what we have is layered structure or layer structure of community architecture of cloud layered architecture of cloud in layered architecture we categorize the cloud architecture mainly into four layers what all the four layers we have data center as a layer infrastructure as a layer platform as a layer and then application as a layer here Uh, we have already discussed this that is infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service in the data center and the infrastructure layer both together constitute the as that is who is going to take care of this system administrator is going to manage this data center and then the infrastructure layer and here platform layer co contribute what pass that the service provided by the uh, provider only platform as a service that who is going to use this pass or who is going to use this platform layer the software developer is going to use the platform layer application layer who is going to use application layer the users like you and user like us everyone can use the sas as an application any user can use it so here some of the examples what we have as an application layer gmail facebook salesforce and youtube everyone can access those applications right so that is saas software as an application platform layer uh, example amazon sample and google app engine these are the platform provided by the google and the amazon to develop some application so this is a platform layer amazon web service services flexible and the rack space all the infrastructure providers okay they have their own hardware using those own hardware they create the virtual machine and then they provide the infrastructure for the system admins okay 
and then data center we don't have any service provider for the data center it is who installing all the resources in one place that is called as a data center let's see each of the layers one by one in the application layer which is at the top most on the stack stack you know right so top most layer is a application application layer where the actual cloud app is located here the actual cloud will be located user can access this application according to their need if you want to use facebook you can use insta right depends on users need they can access any of the application application are divided into execution layer and then the application layer one is execution layer one is application layer the application layer determines whether the communication partners are available or not what it decide whether the communication partner is available or not whether through the cloud resources are accessible for the required communication is decided at the application which communication which application has to be used that is decided by whom that is decided by the application layer the application layer in particularly is responsible for processing the ip traffic internet protocol traffic okay there are many users using the same application so who is going to manage those traffic who is coming into the picture that is maintained by the application layer protocol what is meant by traffic traffic means what uh, many users requesting for the same data to give you on a real life example if you are going for movie not in the multiplex anywhere if you are going for the movie in the local theater how the crowd will be there to take the ticket recently released movie uh, houseful movie you want to watch on the same day how you will take the ticket everyone or climbing on one other in in front of ticket counter right that is called as traffic so if you say, take the same scenario if you put the same scenario in the multiplex what they are doing they are having different uh, ticket counters and they'll having different queues so that everyone can access the ticket very easily so that is a managed of management of traffic this is unmanaged traffic hope you are getting the scenario of what i am telling okay so who is going to manage a queue like a multiplex application layer is going to do that other example of application layer system includes the web browsers snmp protocols http protocol https which is a https successor protocol these are all the examples where the application layer working on next what uh, layer we have we have a platform layer the operating system and the application software make up this layer platform layer application software as well as combining with the operating system will form the platform layer user should be able to create their own app test the operational process and keep the track of executing outcome and then the performance you are developing your own app developing testing and you are checking the run time execution this all process is taken care by whom taken care by platform layer the objective of this layer is to deploy the application directly on the virtual machine the platform layer goal is a uh, listening the difficulty of deployment program directly onto the virtual machine container what is the difficulty we have in the platform directly putting your application which is designed by you onto the uh, virtual machine example what we have as a platform layer google app engine functions that works as a platform layer providing the api support api means what application program interface it provides the interface between application as well as a program
Next, what we have is infrastructure as a layer. In this layer, the virtualization where the physical resources are divided into the collection of virtual resources. For example, you have memory, CPU that is processing unit, you have network unit. So these are all what? Physical resources. So what this infrastructure layer does, these all physical resources what we have that will be converted into the virtual resources. Instead of one memory, one CPU and one network, what it will do? It will create virtually the number of memories, one, two, three, like that. Number of CPUs, one, two, three, so on and number of network so on this is what memory this is processor this is network like that it will divide the resources into the virtual machine this layer serves as a central hub of the cloud environment until unless we have a virtual resource it is difficult to have a cloud environment that's why they say that this is a central hub infrastructure layer is a central hub for cloud computing the infrastructure layer sometimes refers as a virtualization layer because we are converting the physical hardware resources into the virtual resources that's why it is called as virtual layer also the infrastructure layer is crucial to the cloud computing since the virtualization technologies are the only one that can provide the many vital capabilities like dynamic resource assignments okay this is very important layer when you are dealing with the cloud computing next layer what we have is data center layer this layer is responsible for managing the physical resources such as servers what are the physical resources we have servers switches routers power supplier cooling systems these are all the physical resources so data center what we have data center we have the physical resources and data center layer manages those physical resources. Providing the end users with the service required all resources to be available and managed at the data center. All the resources which is available and which is required by the users that will be managed by the data center. Data center layers contains many database each serving a single microservices. Each database can be in a microservices or perhaps a few closely related microservices in needed to break the complex service into interdependencies. So dividing the complex problem into small problems and doing the process on that. That is what the data center layer is going to do. Next very important topic virtualization just now we have discussed in the infrastructure layer creating the virtual machine in the infrastructure layer how we are creating the virtual machine using the virtualization okay virtualization technology technology is one of the fundamental component of the cloud computing especially regards to the infrastructure based services exactly right infrastructure based services so consider this is my physical resources processor ram that is a uh, inbuilt memory network rom uh, secondary memory like that and operating system so for these all physical resources it has to be converted into virtual resource So this process is called virtualization, converting physical resource into the virtual resource that can operate on any platform using any operating system that is called as virtualization. So these are some of the virtualization softwares what we have VMware, uh, Microsoft Visual PC and Citrix. Virtualization is a creation of virtual rather than the actual version of something such as operating system, a server, a storage device, a network resources. That is what we have discussed here. Right. One of the fundamental concept of cloud computing. 
virtualization is very important and fundamental co concept of cloud computing what what is virtualization traditionally the operating system and its applications were tightly coupled to the hardware this is operating systems this will be tightly coupled with the hardware whatever the hardware we have do you can separate your motherboard from your system or the operating system from your motherboard no that is called as tightly coupled virtualization decouples the operating system from the physical hardware what virtualization will do for example you have a phone you will get the phone with a different option that is 128 gb 256 gb so if you take this 128 gb processor mobile and if you are using 256 gb processor mobile so someone is having 8 gb okay this person have less memory so it is possible to give some memory from here to this person no right that is called as tightly coupled what virtualization will do virtualization will divide this complete memory in all with the 8 gb so on like that so how much it is required by this person will be allocated to this person that is called as decoupling okay it decouples the operating system for the physical hardware this allows the ability to change the hardware without replacing the operating system as a application let's see here in this example this is a traditional architecture what we have here we have a application operating system and then the physical resources so all the physical resources has to go via operating system to develop any application then come here here what we are doing instead of operating system we are creating the virtualization layer this is our physical hardware with physical hardware we are creating virtualization if you have one server using virtualization you can show the operating system or the user that you have more than one you have five servers that is virtualization so it will create the virtualization layer in virtualization layer we have different operating system why we have a different operating system because virtualization make us to assume we have different or many number of resources so this is what the virtualization will do why virtualization environment is so popular today increasing performance and computing capacity one of the major advantage or characteristics of virtualization is increased performance and then the computing capacity here you can see instead of one operating system you have three operating system using three operating system you can develop three different application at the same time like pcs are having immense computing power nowadays you are getting the pc with a much more computing power but we are not utilizing it to the full so to make that utilizing it to the full and the resources within that they are using the virtualization hardware and the software resources under utilized hardware and then the software resources that is what i have told you computing power is more memory is more right so whether you are using that much no you are not using that much so this virtualization allows you to have how much you have you want to use and remaining will be given to some others limited use of increased performance and computing capability lack of space uh, constitute need for additional capacity some may have lack of space and some may have just now i have given you the example of 8 gb and 128 gb so someone have a lack of space someone have unrequired space so switching from here to there then greening initiative reducing the carbon footprint reducing the number of servers reducing the power consumption as we are virtualizing the servers as a one server into five or 10 servers we are reducing the number of physical servers so the power consumption need by the server will be less thus we are uh, we are 
reducing the carbon footprint raise of administrative cost because to maintain the server you need to have one more administrator to maintain all the servers here we are not maintaining you are maintaining only one server anyone can easily do who has a knowledge right you need not to hire more people to maintain more server but virtualization creating the more servers with a one physical servers so that is the reason why we are have to go for virtualization this is virtualized environment in the virtualized environment we have three main characteristic who are the characters in the virtualized environment host virtualization layer and then the guest who is the host all the physical infrastructure will be considered as a host and once we are converting that physical infrastructure into the virtualization we have a virtual machine manager that is also on a software so he is the middle layer and he is providing the communication between the guest and then the host that is physical layer who is a guest guest is a virtual machine manager communicating via virtual layer characteristics of virtualization environment what are the characteristics or the advantage using the virtualization increased security ability to control the execution of the guest as guest as a user we have a ability to control the execution since they are not directly communicating with the hardware devices the guest is executed in emulated environment where he is executing the program in emulated in virtual environment the virtual machine manager controls and filters the activity of the guest virtual machine manager since it is a uh, guest is operating on the virtual machine machine manager will get to know whether this is a correct user or the debugger or he is not using the application for proper usage so at that time only the virtual machine manager can control the guest hiding of resources since the physical resources is not visible to any of the users or any of the guest they are hiding the resources they cannot make the changes on the resources having no effect on the other users and the guest environment how many times or how many users are using it does that not affect on the other users okay these are the characteristics of virtual machine and characteristics what we have is uh, virtual resources aggregation emulation isolation and virtualization these are all the physical resources these are converted into the virtual resources what the res virtual resource that is sharing sharing means a single server here you can see the single server is virtualized into number of server as a four server that is called as sharing here aggregation aggregation means what different servers are acting as a one server one resources four resources together we can aggregate and form one resource emulation means uh, emulation mean mimicking same exactly one resources is there that exact replica should be present in the virtual layer isolation isolation means one user and the other user should not know whether the first user is using what and the second user using what that is isolation virtualization this is a layer of virtualization this is a layer of virtual resource and this is a physical layer what we have sharing virtualization allows the creation of a separate computing environment within the same host the basic features is used to reduce the number of active servers and limit the power consumption so here you can see a one server acting as many servers so that reduce the power consumption aggregation not only it is possible to share the physical resources among the several guest but virtualization also allow you to aggregate aggregate means combining which is the opposite of process of sharing a group of separate host can be tied together and represented to the guest as in a single user or single server emulation emulation means what guest programs are executed within the environment that is controlled by the virtualization layer which is ultimately the programmer
Also, completely different environment with respect to the host can be emulated. Thus, allowing the execution of the guest program requiring the specific characteristics that are not present in the physical host. You can ask for exact copy of whatever it is there in the physical resources. Then isolation. Iso virtualization allows providing the guest whether they are operating system, application or other entities with a complete separate environment which they can execute. So virtual machine, I have four servers, right? So four different users. A single server, virtual machine, we have created virtualization, server 1, server 2 and server 3. This is a single main server, virtual machine, this is a hardware. So user 1, user 2 and user 3. User 1 will assume that he is working on complete server and though also user 2 is user 3 is also assumes that it makes so assume it is also working on complete server which server is allocated to the which user that does not know that is called isolation beside these characteristics another important capability enabled by the virtual machine is performance tuning by doing all these things one most important character is performance tuning Okay, portability, the concept of portability applies in the different ways according to the specific type of virtualization. There are different types of virtualization, hardware, operating system, application, software like that. So portability depends on the type of virtualization. Portability means what? Easily we can port, we can take that in from one place to the other place that is called as portability. In the case of hardware virtualization, solution the guest is packed into the virtual image that in the most cases you can satisfy moving the execution on the top of different machine in the hardware virtualization it is difficult to move from one platform to the other platform while it comes to the programming level virtualization it is easy to have a portability for example in your java when you when, when you are executing java is a portable language we say what you meant by portable language you can run the java program the same code of the program in two different platforms right without changing anything that is called as portability like why it happens so because when we compile the java program it will have its own byte codes whenever it will carry it will go to the different platform it will carry its own byte code okay as you know machine understand only the binary codes so these byte codes are nothing but the binary code and once we execute it in the linux platform it will execute the same program the same program can be executed in the Windows operating system also. So that is what they are saying. It depends on the type of virtualization, what type of virtualization we are using. So that is all about portability. Thank you.